Welcome to your crash course on Ethereum. Is it a get-rich-quick scheme? Is it a picture of a monkey that your 13-year-old nephew told you about? Nope, it's a blockchain that's transforming the way we do things online and in the real world. Hey, and give yourself a pat on the back for getting curious and making it to this video. Now let's pat ourselves on the back for a job well done. Welcome to Web3 World, where we demystify Web3, blockchain, and cryptocurrency. Get ready to learn how Ethereum uses lines of code to change the way we do things like banking, send money to one another, and prove ownership. Once you see how disruptive Ethereum's technology is, you'll understand why it's become one of the biggest assets in the entire world. Chances are you've heard about Ethereum before and most likely from the news headlines saying the token price is either going up or down, but Ethereum is so much more than just a token. The value lies in the underlying technology and its applications across every aspect of our lives. In fact, this technology was once valued higher than companies like Disney, Visa, and Bank of America. But what makes Ethereum one of the most disruptive technologies we've ever seen? Well, for starters, Ethereum is a decentralized computer network that uses blockchain technology to securely record transactions and store data. So if this is new to you, here's what you need to know. Blockchains are a decentralized distributed database that uses cryptography and math to store and validate transactions. So the reason why it's called a blockchain is because this cutting edge technology batches transactions into a series of blocks that form a chain. Get it? Blockchain. It's super secure because once transactions are completed, records cannot be altered. And we'll get more into this later, but Ethereum is currently the world's second most valuable blockchain just behind Bitcoin. It's also the first blockchain to incorporate what are called smart contracts, but more on that in a bit as well. Ethereum is the first smart contract blockchain, but before we get too deep, let's get clear on some nomenclature. Ethereum is the name of the blockchain, and the coin or the token that people buy is Ether, or abbreviated ETH for short. Ether isn't just an investment, it's also used to execute smart contracts and other transactions on the Ethereum network. This video focuses on the Ethereum blockchain itself, so if you're curious about the token or the cryptocurrency, subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming videos on Ether. Okay, now let's get back to Ethereum and why it was created. So back in 2013, four years after the creation of Bitcoin, Vitalik Buterin and a team of developers came up with an idea for a new blockchain that solved some of Bitcoin's problems. While Bitcoin aimed to be this big peer-to-peer -peer payment network, users of the network experience extremely slow transaction times, with some transactions taking literally hours. So imagine waiting an hour for your Venmo to go through. Not an ideal for a payment system, if you ask me. And while that was a glaring issue, Ethereum didn't just want to be a faster way to send money, but it also aimed to let people do more with the blockchain technology. So out of Bitcoin came an idea that the world could partially be run by a network of computers. No, no, not like the movie Terminator. The idea is that we transact with one another and those transactions be verified by a global network of computers. So this is in contrast to today, where transactions like your Venmo requests are actually facilitated by a big bank. And the bank is the middleman, and they're the only ones who profit off of your transactions. So to cut out the middleman, Ethereum aimed to be smart contract compatible. So now let's get into smart contracts. A smart contract is a written code that can automatically perform an action when certain criteria are met. So think of a vending machine. When you put a dollar in, you know you'll get a snack or drink in return. Well, hopefully. Come on! A smart contract is kind of like a virtual vending machine with a computer code allowing two people to interact with one another instead of one person interacting with the machine. And while two people transacting isn't anything new, smart contracts allow it to be done without a third party like a bank approving the transaction. Ethereum is creating endless use cases because it can automate transactions in a secure and sensor-free way. Even though the idea of a smart contract sounds cool, it took quite some time to figure out just how to use them. While Ethereum was created in 2015, its biggest use case didn't become popular until 2020. And the use case is... Decentralized Finance, also known as DeFi. Were you thinking NFTs? Don't worry, we'll get to that. 
Okay, let's break down decentralized finance. Decentralized essentially means no one party can control something, but rather it is controlled by a network of independently run automated computers. These computers can be run by anyone, including you. So Ethereum brought this automation and applied it to finance. Think of how you use a bank. When you deposit money into your checking or savings account, it sits in an account that is controlled by your bank. Your bank is a centralized entity, meaning it has complete control over all the rules that you must abide by in order to use its services. If you want a loan from the bank, you have to apply and hope that you get approval. If you want to cash a check you got from a friend, you have to wait for your bank before you can use the money. You need cash now. With decentralized finance, however, power is transferred from banks to DeFi users in all types of ways. First, people who hold crypto assets can deposit them into an application on Ethereum and then lend it out to others to earn interest. And in case you didn't know, your bank does the exact same thing. When you deposit money into your savings account, the bank then turns around and lends that money to those who are seeking loans. The person who takes out the loan pays back the principal on the loan plus interest to the bank. And usually this interest rate is something around 10%. And the problem is the bank pays you a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of that interest, even though it's your money. Most of the time you earn as little as 0.02%. So why does the bank take such a hefty cut? Simply put, they're taking the profits and it's why banks have their names plastered on most of the skyscrapers. The rich getting richer. With DeFi, users can deposit money into a decentralized finance application and earn up to 10% or more. That's because the costs of running a decentralized app are way lower than a big bank. Also, the ethos and goal of Web3 is decentralized ownership. So instead of the profit going to the banks, it's distributed to the people. So the next big use case for Ethereum came with NFTs. NFT stands for a non-fungible token, and it's a way to represent ownership of a unique one-of-one -one item that's transacted and recorded with a blockchain. The most popular examples of NFTs are in the art and collectible world. You might have seen these little monkeys around. They're called the Board Ape Yacht Club. Or what about these pixelated guys? They're CryptoPunks, one of the first NFT art projects. And the oh so famous six figure pet rocks? Wait, what? NFTs took the world by storm in 2021 and with some of the biggest celebrities in the world buying them and using them as status symbols. Why? Because to own a Board 8 Yacht Club or a CryptoPunk, you have to spend at least six figures to get one of these JPEGs. But NFTs have actually been around since Ethereum's early days, garnering very little attention at the start. And in fact, many of today's multi-million dollar NFTs were once available for a few hundred dollars only a few short years ago. And if you're wondering why the pixelated, often confusing art is selling for millions of dollars, you're not alone. I mean, why can't you just right click and save, right? Well, the allure of NFTs comes with the expanding idea that you can use a blockchain to prove you own something. In fact, the first house was sold via an NFT in South Carolina in October of 2022. So instead of going to the loan officer to get a mortgage and paying a ton of bank fees, you can directly purchase a home from the previous owner. That way the seller can make more money and you don't need to spend extra money on fees and middlemen. Another use for NFTs is access to live events like concerts or fan clubs. It's popular with artists, athletes, and even businessmen like Gary Vee. If you ask me, this is a great start to using NFTs to prove ownership of assets in the real world. While Ethereum can change the world and change the future, it's important to note that the entire Web3 world is still in its infancy stage and why cryptocurrency is still widely regarded as a speculative asset. If successful though, cryptocurrency can go from being used by only a few million to billions. However, before billions will use Ethereum, a few improvements need to be made. You may have heard about one of Ethereum's biggest moments in the news, AKA the merge or Ethereum 2.0. If there is one thing you need to know about the merge, it's that Ethereum went from using a proof of work consensus to a proof of stake consensus. If you don't know what those are, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll be dropping a new video explaining what proof of work and proof of stake are. But for now, just know that consensus is the method that all computers around the world use to verify that a blockchain transactions are actually accurate. The main benefit of the merge is proof of stake consensus, and it's a much more eco-friendly way to run a blockchain, cutting 99% of Ethereum's energy consumption compared to when it was proof of work. So my friends, 
The merge marked the beginning of ETH 2.0 and a more scalable, environmentally friendly blockchain. That's the goal at least. While the merge was a big milestone in Ethereum's history, it was just step one of many much needed improvements. In the crypto bull run of 2021, users of Ethereum experienced consistently slow transaction times and incredibly high transaction fees. To help Ethereum handle more transactions and keep costs low, other projects then emerged to make it run more efficiently. Yay, innovation! So some of the biggest names helping Ethereum scale are Polygon, Arbitrum, and ZK Sync. Don't worry, we will cover them later on this channel, so make sure to subscribe. So to wrap this up and why you should care and pay attention to Ethereum, even with the ETH killer quote unquote blockchains claiming that they had solved all of the issues that Ethereum had faced, Ethereum still remains far and away the most widely used blockchain with millions of daily users transacting billions of dollars compared to all of these other chains. So that's all for today's Ethereum crash course. Give our video a like if you enjoyed it and maybe share it with a friend and subscribe if you haven't yet or the pet rock gets it. See you in the next one.